Hello, people in the world! During this time of filming, it is Tokyo 2021 Olympic season! Then I wondered, was the Olympics referenced in the Bible? I did my research, so let me tell you the answer right now. Yes, it was. Is that for real? Is that true? The passage we'll be studying for today was written to the people of Corinth. And that is one of the direct locations of the ancient Olympic Games. If you want to look up more on that, it is the place called Isthmia, which is found in Corinth. I'm Hannah, and today I will be giving you your weekly dose of hope and future Bible devotions. Because I'm a geek, I'm going to give you a little bit more trivia on this topic. The ancient Olympic Games started in 766 BC in Greece as an athletic religious festival in honor of Zeus. You may be wondering what sports there were back then. Well, it started with just the foot races. And then later on, as the years went by, there were additional sports added, such as equestrian events, throwing the discus and javelin, boxing, wrestling, and the long jump. I can go on and on about things that I learned about the ancient Olympic Games, but we're only going to stick with the things that are relevant to today's study. I find it actually crazy to think that the ancient Olympic Games were happening and not just that, it was really popular during the time that Paul wrote a letter to the Corinthian church. Because the Corinthian people could relate so well with the events, then Paul used it as a reference. With that, let's go to the passage for today. It is found in 1 Corinthians 9 verses 24 to 27. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. So they do it to obtain a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Therefore I run in such a way as not to run aimlessly. I box in such a way as to avoid hitting air. But I strictly discipline my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. When I was in college, I remember wanting to be part of the volleyball team. I didn't really push through because I liked the sport, but I wasn't willing to give up my weekends. So that was my attempt to become an athlete, which didn't really become very successful. Paul was really committed to sharing the gospel regardless of the cost. I mean, he did have a direct encounter with Jesus himself. There are going to be three things that we have to remember for today's passage. So first is run to win. Live with a goal in mind. Everyone has at least one gift. As for me, it is teaching. So go ahead, you have to find out what your gift is and do your best at it because that's a gift that was given to you. Use it. Having a goal helps you set your priorities. Second is to be disciplined. Whenever I think of discipline, I think of food. I'm a foodie, so discipline is pretty hard in a sense for me. I like cafes and there are a lot in the area and it's great to try a lot of their cakes and coffees and it's so hard to go on a diet. But because of what my family has been going through with regard to health, I have come to think, okay, I've got to be careful with my food intake. So with that, I don't always eat out when I want to. I don't always eat all the Filipino food that I want because I know that not all of it is good for my heart and it's not good to eat all of that every day. And so it is necessary to, to be disciplined, even in the Christian life. What are the things that we have to do to stay spiritually fit? We have to read our Bibles every day. We have to meet up with godly people. We have to go to Bible studies. We have to serve. So there are so many things that we can do to stay spiritually healthy. 
but it's also easy to make up excuses. Oh, I'm busy. Oh, I have work. I have to go to this place where I have to meet up a friend. I have to make sure I have seven hours of sleep. There are so many distractions. We really have to put it in our minds. What do we prioritize? It goes back to our first point earlier. We have to know what our goal is. You gotta check that. Be disciplined. Number three, know what you're living for. We're living for God who gave us everything. God gave us eyesight so that we could see the beautiful flowers. God gave us our noses so that we can smell. God gave us air that we could breathe. We run with an eternal prize in mind. Sometimes being a Christian can be hard. We live in a world where when we share our love to others, sometimes it is looked at as hate. Sometimes we get misunderstood and we're called weird and Jesus freaks. Sometimes we just wanna stay quiet because it's easier that way. We are not to expect that the Christian life is going to be easy because we're pilgrims in this world. It says in Philippians 3 verse 20, our citizenship is in heaven. In fact, it, it's actually a good thing if you're looked at as different. It shows that you're actually doing something right for God. In the end, we'll get our heavenly prize. Here on earth, we get our perishable wreaths, just like in the Olympics. But in heaven, we will get our heavenly crowns, our heavenly prizes. We will be with Jesus for eternity, just like it says in Revelation 21. There will be no more suffering, no more pain, no more tears, and all of those things. It will be perfect peace. So with that, I encourage you, just like an Olympian athlete, Run to win, be disciplined, and know what you're living for. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to get more content like this, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I hope to see you in the next video. So God bless and see you next time.